Good morning everyone and welcome to this online service as we come to worship God on this fifth Sunday of Lent. And when we come ever closer to the climax of Jesus' ministry, as he declares that his hour has come to be glorified, he reaffirms to his hearers that all who serve him must follow him and that the Father will honour those people. It's a stark reminder to us to take up our cross as we emerge from the darkness of this past 12 months and look to the future in the light of Christ. And so as we gather together, we say, we meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. And we pray, Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our Gospel reading today, we will hear how a group of people ask to see Jesus. The words of our first song provide us with a picture of him. So may we too see Jesus in our worship this morning. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony. The man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility and washes our feet. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty, bow down and worship. This is your God, this is your God. Father's pure radiance, perfect in innocence, yet learns obedience to death on a cross, suffering to give us life, Conquering through sacrifice, and as they crucify, praise Father, forgive. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty, bow down and worship, for this is your Unsearchable, God the invisible, love indestructible, in frailty appears. Lord of infinity, stooping so tenderly, lifts our humanity to the heights of his throne. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty. And so we come to our time of confession. The Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Saying together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
We confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Today and throughout Lent we hear two readings, one from the Old Testament and one from the Gospels. Today the readings are read by Neil and Jerry. Peter will then give his reflection, and this will be followed by music from Frida and Kathy. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at verse 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbour or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading comes from John's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning at verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, Save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there, and heard it, said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The time between today and Holy Saturday we call Passion Tide, when we think about Christ's Passion and all the great themes of redemption, incarnation, suffering, death, resurrection and glorification. We witness endurance, 
submission and suffering, as well as love, anger and hate. All emotions that we feel and experience and that Christ felt from the time he left the Last Supper until his final moments on the cross. The cross, so central to the Christian faith and the undisputed symbol of Christianity. Our Lord's teaching is of great importance, but secondary to his death and resurrection. The principal work of our Lord was not what he said, but what he did. He died and rose again for our salvation. Christ's suffering was real and cruel, physically, mentally and spiritually, and it ended in death. We can perhaps imagine the horror of the physical suffering. This is the aspect of his passion that hits us hardest, perhaps because it can be captured in all its gory details and demonstrated for us on stage and film. We can relate to the imagery of the crucifixion as we see and hear the nails being driven through hands and feet and then Jesus being left to die, whilst all the time being taunted and mocked. For Christ, who was perfectly holy, the experience was unspeakably wretched. But it was at this time that he demonstrated that he was wholly human, as well as being wholly divine. He showed real human emotions. He felt abandoned frightened and lost, and felt most keenly that he was estranged from God his Father. In the Garden of Gethsemane he prayed, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And then his cry from the cross, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He died for our sins, and we call this the atonement, quite literally the at one meant, the reconciliation of two who have been separated, and our reconciliation with God through the sacrificial death of Christ. We had been separated, had cut ourselves off from God. Jesus came to close that gap that had opened up between God and his people and to lead us back to the Father. So how shall we spend Passiontide? Will we treat the next two weeks just like any other two weeks in the year? Or will we take advantage of the opportunity that we have to spend time in attempting to share with Christ in his passion? One thing is certain. For the second year running, Holy Week will be different. There will be opportunities to share and experience different sorts of worship, but mainly virtually in our own homes instead of in church. It is a time when we could profitably look inwards at ourselves and at our response to our Christian faith. And it's a time when we might well feel uncomfortable in doing this. These next two weeks are the most holy in the church calendar. We should use them well. Amen.
Let us together declare our faith in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. As we think of our church family here in the benefice and beyond, we share Christ's peace. We are the body of Christ in one spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We come now to our prayers, which this morning will be led by Viv. Heavenly Father, as we begin this Passion Tide, we give thanks for your love and faithfulness, your desire to forgive and renew, and we thank you for Jesus Christ, who made our salvation possible. But we know that our salvation costs pain and death, and as we remember the sufferings of Christ's last few days of his earthly life, we come in humility to pray for the needs of the world, and ourselves. We pray for your church both here and around the world. We pray for all ministers, missionaries and for us as we all proclaim in word and service the truth of Jesus. Christ, when tempted, answered the devil with the word of God. May we know and understand the word in order to help others hear the good news of the gospel. In these challenging times, we pray for our government, politicians and royal family, all in accountable roles of caring for our nation. Christ mocked and charged King of the Jews a title few understood. Give our leaders right and just ruling, knowing that we are all answerable to you, the King of Kings. In this time of great challenge, we pray for the economic well-being of the country. We remember those who face great uncertainty in their work, we live before God, those who have lost their jobs and face an uncertain and difficult future. Christ, who gave up comfort and security for our sake, lead us to seek God's kingdom first. Draw near, we pray, to those who are afraid, confused and stretched beyond their own capacity to cope. May they find in you a renewed hope, comfort and strength. Christ, who in the garden wrestled with doubt and fear, bring the lost out of darkness into your light. We pray for the many people who are unwell at this moment. For Bishop Peter, others known and loved by us, and even more known only to God. We give thanks to God, the great healer, and thanks for those who work in the NHS, praying that God would work through their hands as they care for us all. 
Christ, who felt pain and loneliness as he hung on the cross, grant healing and hope to sick and suffering people. So, Heavenly Father, show us more of Jesus, his passion and the cross, for the gift of redemption, for your grace and love for each one of us. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for ourselves, our own families and friends. Christ, as you give yourself for us, let us give ourselves to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we pray the special prayer for today, the collet for the fifth Sunday of Lent. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we join all our thoughts and prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our final song also paints a picture of Jesus man of sorrows, and also takes us right through the Easter narrative and beyond. Hallelujah, what a saviour. Man of sorrows, what a name For the Son of God who came Ruin sinners to reclaim Hallelujah, what a saviour Bearing shame and scoffing rude In my place condemned he stood Sealed my pardon with his blood Hallelujah, what a saviour Guilty, vile and helpless we Spotless Lamb of God was he, full atonement can it be, hallelujah, what a saviour. Lifted up was he to die, it is finished was his cry. Now in heaven exalted high, hallelujah, what a saviour. When he comes, our glorious King, all his ransomed home to bring, then anew this song will sing, hallelujah, what a saviour. As our worship draws to a close, let us remember our families, our friends and neighbours in our communities and beyond, as we say the following prayer together. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourselves, 
take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.